Hello and welcome to Good Old Radio Vintage Radio Shows. Kick back, grab a cup of coffee, some favorite tea, and let's start the show. Today's show is Orson Welles in Ah Wilderness 1939. Let's get the show started. Good evening. This is Orson Welles. Tonight we broadcast a Pulitzer Prize play by a great American dramatist. Simple enough story, more point than plot, more truth than glamour. Tonight, dear Lena, we won't try to take you out of yourself, but if we can, we'll take you back. Back to 1910, remember? If you were our hero's age at the time, maybe you won't want to. When Richard Miller is the protagonist tonight, I guess the easiest way to take him is to try to pretend he isn't us. Dredging brightly down into the carefully forgotten depths of his awkwardness, your obedience and will tonight attempt to perform Richard Miller. The lifelike coloring, as far as possible, will be maintained. But our wilderness is best remembered for another character. To play Richard's father, the only actor I could think of who could follow George M. Cohan, Will Rogers, and Lionel Barrymore, is Ray Collin. Just set it right here. Okay. Now look out for the fuse. Keep it straight. Here's the match. Right now, the minute I light this, put the can on top of it. Here it goes. Quick! Run! Run! See me at this level long. I'm here to talk to you, Matt. Well, go ahead. I'll come to the point at once. There's something disagreeable. Disgraceful would be nearer the truth. And it concerns your son, Richard. Oh, come now, Dave. I'm sure Richard hadn't done anything. And I'm positive he has. I brought the proofs with me. I've got a lot more at home. These are good samples of the rest. Let's see. My wife discovered them in one of Muriel's bureau drawers hidden under the underwear. They're all in handwriting. You can't deny it. Uh-huh. Now, go on. Read them. All night against my heart, I felt your warm heart beat. Night long within mine arms, in love and sleep you lay. Well, well, uh, thy breath was shed betwixt the kisses and the wine. Well, if a little good poetry... Anyway, what do you want me to do? Do what it's your plain duty to do as a citizen to protect other people's children. Take and give him a hiding he'd remember to the rest of his life. You'd ought to do it for his sake if you had a sense... Unless you want him to end up in jail. Dave, I've stood all I can stand from you. You get along. Get along quick. You don't want a kick in the rear. Help me. Now, you need to lay hands on me, Matt Miller. I'm going. But there's one thing more. Here's a letter from Muriel, dear son. I hope he heeds what's inside for his own good. And yours. Because if I ever catch him hanging around my place again, I'll have him arrested. You will, huh? Yes, I will. And don't think I'm not going to make you regret the insult you've done me. I'm taking the advertisement for my store out of your newspaper. All right, go on. Take it out. You may be the biggest advertiser in town, but you can get out and go to the devil. Do you mean that yes, you... Yes, I would. That's all bluff. You wouldn't dare. Yes, I would. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I would, too. Well, good day. Oh, fool. Richard! made that plain. Oh, I'm sorry, Pa. I didn't hear you. <laughs> I was off in another world. Listen, son. I'm going to ask you a question. I want an honest answer. I warn you beforehand that if the answer is yes, I'm going to punish you and punish you hard. Because you will have done something no boy of mine ought to do. You've never lied to me before, I know, and I believe even to save yourself punishment. 
You'd love me now, would you? Oh, I won't lie, Father. Richard, uh, is there anything between you and Muriel? Uh, anything you shouldn't... Uh, oh, you know what I mean. What do you uh, think I am? What, Father, I, I love Muriel. I'm going to marry her after I get out of college. She said she would. We're engaged. Uh, that's all I wanted to know. They won't talk about it anymore. Oh, here's a letter from her he said he'd give you. Her father. You better be prepared for a bit of a blow, son. Never mind. There's lots of other fish in the sea. Here you are. Here's a letter. Well, thanks, Pa. Say, what's happened to your ma and Aunt Lily? They're so darn busy keeping an eye on Sid today, the pair of them. I think I'll go down to the beach ways and see if they're there and maybe say hello to some of the folks. If they show up, tell them I'll be right back. Yes, Pa. Dear Richard, please don't try and answer this. It's no use. After what you've done, I never want to see you again. Never. If that's all you think of me, goodbye forever, Muriel. The little coward. I hate her. She can't treat me like that. I'll show her. What is it? I'll show her. Richard! What is it? Here's Wax looking for you. See, Wynn, here he is. You owe me a nickel. I, I, I told him you'd be here. Hello, Wynn. Oh, hello, Dick. Hey, Tommy, get up. I want to talk to Dick. What? Me? After I told you where he was and come all the way over out of the water, show uh, you? Go on, Tommy. Here's the time. Now get up. There's a good kid. Okay, I don't want to listen anyway. I'm going into the water. Say, Richard, I'm in trouble. What is it, Wynn? Can I help? Can you keep your face shut? I can't. Well, I'll tell you what it is. I ran into a couple of swift dates from New Haven this noon. I did them up for tonight. You know, fourth, you know. Now I can't find anyone to go with me. So I'll have to pass it up. I'm broke. I can't afford to blow them both to drink. I got $11 saved up. I could loan you some. Say, you're a good sport. Oh, Nick's kid. I don't want to borrow money. Say, have you got anything on for tonight? No. Want to come along with me? Oh, you mean... I'm trying to lead you astray, understand? You don't have to do anything. Not even take a glass of beer, unless you want to. Oh, what do you think I am, a rube? You mean you're green for anything that's doing? Sure I am. Will ever drink anything besides sodas? Sure, lots of times. Beer and you know, slow gin fizz and Manhattans. Hey, you know more than I thought. Can you fix it up so your folks won't get wise? Ought to be easy on fourth. Sure. Don't worry about that. Okay. Then you be at the Pleasant Beach Hotel at 9 o'clock. Sure. In the back room. That's easy. Watch your step, kid. So long. So long. Oh, sure. Oh, hello, Richard. Hello, Mom. What did old man McCumber want? Saw him way down the beach talking to your pa. Something foolish, I'll bet, the old blue nose. I see. Well, Richard, what do you want? Oh, ask Pa. Why, whatever's the matter with you, Richard? Football. Lily, don't you spoil Oh, Ma. Me. Moping around that way and on oh, the 4th Ma. of July, too. Oh, darn 4th of July, anyway. I wish we still belonged to England. Richard! Richard, you come back oh, here. Oh, Richard. No, he's a queer boy. Sometimes I can't make head or tail of him. Hey, Sid, where do you think you're going? I, uh, I wondered where Nat was. I thought I'd go down the beach and wasn't look for him. Are you sure that's all you're looking for, Sid? Why, Essie, are you by any chance insinuating? You know what I mean. Now, you see how it is, Lily, when my own sister thinks the worst of I'm me? not thinking of thing. I'm just remembering what happened last year at the picnic. Last year? Why, what happened last year? Oh, it won't happen again, is it? It's been a long chapter since you've been on the paper in Waterbury. And that's what he swore to me last night, didn't you, Sid? Pure as the driven snow, that's me. <laughs> oh, Sid, you're a caution. Well, go on down the beach. And when you find that you bring him back here, do you hear me? Don't you two start talking around with everybody. It's getting late. We'll have to be starting home. Somebody's got to get supper ready. Yes, yes. Sir. And Sid, well, remember your promise. I swear to you, Lily, that if any man offers me a drink, I'll kill him. <laughs> that is, if he changes his mind. Oh. <laughs> so long. And you tell Nat if you aren't back in 15 minutes. We're starting home, do you hear? With Tommy and Richard, we're taking the car. You two come home anyway, you see? You see it? See it?
then. Oh, dear. Ma! Ma! They're coming! Come on, Uncle Sam! I, I heard him way down the street. All right, dear, all right. We'll sit right down to supper. Tommy, you go wash your hands. Oh, I did, Ma. Gee, I, I'm hungry, Ma. I know Ma. you always are. Richard? Oh, gee, I love lobster, Ma. Uh, supper's ready, Richard. You put that book away and come right in and sit down. Yes, Ma. Uh, you too, Lily. We'll get them right in here and get some food in them. They'll be all right then. Gee, Ma, it sounds like Uncle Sit's house again. Tommy, you be quiet. You're getting too smart. Well, I just... You sit right down and not enough word out of you. Oh, Ma. Now then, now then, everybody keep quiet now. Quiet. Here, Nat, don't stop to wash up or anything. The supper's on the table. All right, Lily, you start passing the soup. Well, let's see. Here we are. Right on the dot. Here we are. So I see you're here, and if I didn't, you've told me four times already. Oh, Essie, don't be critical. Don't be carpingly critical. Good news can stand repeat, can't it? Of course it can. And Nora, bring that soup here this minute. Yes, ma'am. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Good to be home again. Now, start eating, everybody. A good day. Where's Sid? Uh, Essie, I think Sid's sort of embarrassed about coming in. Down on the beach there, you have such a lot of friends. And, well, you know, for you lies like Christmas comes with once a year. Uh, don't pretend to notice, huh? And don't you kiss, you hear? And don't you, Lily. Sorry, what not? Sid! Sid! Come on in. Good evening. Beautiful, beautiful evening. I never remember seeing a more beautiful sunset. What do you say, Lily? It's all right. Well, it's just all right. My friends, I, I give you toast. Soup. The staff of life. The old man's comfort. The young man's joy. The maid do shut up for a minute and eat your soup. Everybody else is finished. Pass me your soup plate, everybody. We'll be here all night. Sure, Ma. Yeah, yeah. After this, there's lobster, and that's all. Tommy, you pass the lobster. Start with your father. Oh, gee, I, I love lobster. Uh, lobster, Pa. Thanks. Have a good time at the beach, Tommy? Oh, fine, Pa. Thanks. The water was wonderful and warm. Uh, swim far? Yes, for me, but that isn't so awful far. A lobster, Aunt Lily? You know, speaking of swimming... I never go down to that beach with what it calls to mind the day I and Red Sisk went swimming there and I saved his life. Red Sisk? Hmm? I thought we'd have him. Have what? Oh, <laughs> nothing. You you go on with your swing, Nat. Don't you mind me. Uh, Uncle said lobster? Oh, you thanks. Red Sisk. Thanks. Yes, sir. We kids call him Red because he has the darndest red crop of hair. Daryl, Daryl, Daryl. What? The curious imagination of little children. Dad, eat your lobster and shut up. Go on, Nat. Well, as I was saying, Red and I went swimming that day. Must been, uh, Aren't you eating your lobster? Let me see. Red was 14. I was only 12. 41 years ago, there was a stake out where the whistling boy is now, about a mile out. Oh, a stake, huh? See, my love lobster. One more sound out of you, young man. You leave the table. Do eat your lobster, Nat. It's all the rage. Well, if I'm going to be interrupted every second anyway, I... How's Albert's mother's rheumatism, Tommy? Much better, Ma. She was waiting today. She said salt water is the only thing that really helps her bunion. Tommy, where are your manners? The table's no place to Well, as I was saying, there was I in red, and he dared me to raise him out to the stake and back. Well, I didn't let anyone dare me in those days. A spunky kid I was. Oh, Tommy. So I said, all right. We started out. All of a sudden, I heard a sort of a gasp from behind me, like this. Help! I turned. I turned, and there was Red, his face all pinched and white, and he said weakly, Help, now! I got a cramp in my leg. Well, I don't mind telling you, I got mighty scared. I didn't know what to do. Then suddenly I thought of a steak, and that steak was, well, I calculate it must have been 200 feet away. 250. Is that? 
250. I've taken down the distance every time you've saved Red's life for 30 years. And the mean average distance to that stake is 250 feet. Dead. I get it, Sid. Sorry, folks. I guess I've told that one too many times and bored everyone. I'm getting old, I guess, Mother. I'm getting to repeat myself. No such thing. You're as young as you ever were. Did you eat your lobster? Maybe it'll keep your mouth shut. Oh, sure, sure. I'll eat my lobster. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I give you lobster. Lobster, the staff of life. Mercy sakes. Can't you shut up? Ma, look at Uncle Sid. He's eating that claw shells and all. See, do you want to kill yourself? Take it away from him, Lily. Well, I prefer the shells. All fence lobster lovers prefer the shells. Sid, he'd better go right up to bed for a while. That's what he'd better do. Oh, bed? Uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Immediately, if not sooner. Oh, but wait. Ladies and gentlemen, there is still one duty I must perform. No day is complete without me. Lily, answer once and for all. Will you marry me? No, no, I won't. Never. Right. Perhaps it's all for the best. Right, right. Good night, ladies. And thanks. We'll meet. Bye, bye. Down by the Stop it, stop it. What is there to laugh at? That's been his downfall. Everyone always laughing. Everyone always saying what a card he is, what a cape, what a cotton. So funny. And he's gone on. We're all responsible, making it easy for him. And all we do is laugh. Oh, now, Lily, you mustn't take on so. It isn't as serious as all that. Maybe it's to me. Oh, well, one. Oh, oh I, I'm sorry, Lily. I'm sorry. You see, I didn't mean to. I'm not feeling myself tonight. If you'll excuse me, I, I think I'll just go up to my room for a little, of course. Hmm. I suppose she's right. Never knew Lily to come out with things that way before. Uh, anything special happened, Missy? Nothing I know. Hmm. Thought she'd got completely over her foolishness about Sid long ago. Oh, she never will. She better. He's got fired out of that new Waterbury job of his. What? Told me at the picnic. Oh, dear. Isn't he the fool? I knew something was wrong when he came home. Well, I'll find a place for him on my paper again, of course. Oh, dear. You know what I think? I think it's Aunt Lily's fault Uncle Sid's going to ruin. It's all because he loves her and she keeps him dangling after and eggs him on and ruins his life like all women love to ruin men's lives. I don't blame him for drinking himself to death. What does he care if he dies after the way she treated him? I'll do the same thing myself. And I would if I were his boots. Richard, you stop that, Tom. Drink, for you know not whence you came nor why. Drink, for you know not why you go nor where. Drink! Richard, I'm ashamed of you. That's what I am. Oh, Ma. Come on, Matt. Let's go into the parlor and give Nora a chance to clear away. Really? Where's that boy talk? From now on, Richard, you keep that darn fool talk to yourself. Or you're going to regret it. You hear me? Yes, Father. That's about all I can stand to your nonsense for one day. Oh. What do I care? I'll show her. The little coward. I'll show them all. Haven't you ever been to a place like this before? Oh, sure I have. Lots of times. Why do you think I am anyway? I don't know, kid. Unless you got me getting. What did you say your name was? Richard. Well, drink your beer, Richard. Come on, it's getting flat. Oh, I let it get that way on purpose. I I like it better when it's flat. <laughs> say honestly, kid. Did your mother know you're out? Oh, cut it out. Why don't you try to kid me? All right, I didn't mean to, dearie. Please, don't get sore at me. I'm not sore. You see, it's this way with me, Richard. I think you're one of the sweetest kids I've ever met. I could like you a lot if you'd give me half a chance. Instead of acting so cold and indifferent. Well, I'm not cold and indifferent. It's only that I, I... I got a weight on my mind. Here's your drink, kiddo. This'll warm them up. Forty cents with a cigar. Uh, here's a dollar. Keep the change. Oh, thanks, sir. Don't mention it. Hey, anybody here? How about a little sir? I'm coming, I'm coming. Bottoms up now. Uh, all right. Bottoms up. Ah, well. That's something like it. Feel better? You bet. You'll still feel better in a minute. 
And then maybe you won't be so distant and unfriendly, huh? No, oh, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. I think you just don't like me. Oh, I, I do, too, like you. How much? A lot? Yes, a lot. Show me how much. Uh, want me to come sit on your lap? Yes. Well, now you're talking. There. How's that? Swell. Why don't you put your arm around me? Oh, no, not that dead way. Hmm? Hold me tight. You needn't be afraid of hurting me. I like to be held in. Don't you? Sure I do. Then why don't you kiss me? All right. You call that kidding? Here. What's the matter, honey boy? Haven't you ever been kissed before? Sure. Lots of times. Then why'd you jump as if I bit you? Gee, I'm getting crazy about you. Come on. Kiss me again. I can't. I just remembered. I swore it off. Sworn off kissing? What do you mean you've sworn off? I took an oath I'd be faithful. So that's to us part. Who's the girl? Never mind. I'm not good enough to talk about her, I suppose. I didn't mean that. You're all right, only... You wanted to do this kind of thing and write for a nice girl. What's the trouble, sister? Young hopeful here getting annoying? Maybe you'd like a change of atmosphere. No, he's all right, I guess. A little south. Mind if I join your party? What with me? I got no party on. So. I forgot much... Sinera. Gone with the wind. Flung roses. Roses riotously with a throng. Yea, hungry for the lips of my desire. Hey, what's he talking about? Let's have another drink. You've had enough. What is it, a child poet or a child actor? Don't know. Help me get it. Well, sister, if you could check that cradle robbing act, maybe you and I could have a little fun. That's easy. I just pulled my freight. Uh, listen, kid. Yeah. Uh, here's an old friend of mine, Mr. Smith of New Haven. Just come in. Uh, I'm going to go over and sit at his tape for a while, see? And uh, you better go on home. I, I'm never going home. I'll show. Yet each man kills the thing he loves. By each, let this be heard. Hey, this is rich. That's well dope, young fella. Give something more. Some do it with a bitter look. Some with a flaring word. The coward does it with a kiss. The brave man with a sword. I did it with a kiss. I'm a coward. That's the old stuff, kid. All right, all right. Give us another right over the old pan. And then at 10 o'clock, I alert Loveberg will come with vine leaves in his hair. And bats in his belfry if he's you. Oh, I don't mind her, kid. She's just ignorant. Come on now. Come on, kid. Listen. You. Who, me? I don't believe you ever knew her in New Haven at all. You just picked her up now. See, you leave her alone, you hear? You won't do anything for her, not while I'm around to protect her. Well, oh, listen to her. Wait, wait. Curse you, Jack Dalton? If I won't unhand her, what then? I'll give you a crush in the snoot, that's hey, what. Hey, you cut out the noise. What's the matter? Yeah, it's not my business, brother, but if I were in your booth, I'd this young South the gate. He's underage. He told me he was over 18. I guess you're right. Come on now, young fella. Anyway, you'll start no trouble. Beat it now. I will not beat it. Oh, won't you? Let go of me. Now, quiet now, Pinna Mary. Your joy will quiet. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, try and suck me, will you? We'll figure about that. Oh, and now, out you go. You are listening to the Campbell Playhouse presentation of Our Wilderness, starring Orson Welles. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Now we resume our Campbell Playhouse presentation of Our Wilderness, starring Orson Welles. I'm allowed to... How did Pop punish you? He didn't. He went back to the office without seeing me. Gee, after last night, I thought here that you died. Oh, forget it, can't you? Go on, Tommy. Get out of here. I'm sick. If I get out of here, can't give you something I've got for you. Oh, don't try to kid me. You haven't got anything. Tattoo. What? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? I'll give you three guesses. 
Oh, don't bother me, Tommy. I'm in no mood to play riddles with kids. What is it? Well, what would you like best in the world? I don't know. What? It's from Muriel. You mean she... Yeah, just now when I went by, I saw her waving from their parlor window, and so I went up, and she's give this note to Dick. So, uh, so I took... Here it is. Now, aren't you glad I came? Oh, thanks, Tommy. Thanks. Gee. Do you know what she says? She loves me and... Only me, always will, and she's going to try and sneak out and meet me tonight. Hey, you can't do that, Dick. You're not allowed. Can't I, though? You wait and see if I can. I'll go right to the window. I'll see you tonight if it's the last thing I ever do. I don't care what they do to me after that. I don't care if they kill me. Hey, Dick, you sure got nerve. The trouble with most folks is they don't understand what love means. Is it now already? Gosh, time passes when you're thinking. I thought you'd be waiting right here at the end of the path. I'll bet you'd forgotten I was even coming. Oh, no, I hadn't forgotten, Muriel, honest, but I got to thinking about life. You might think of me for a change after all the work I've run to see. Oh, gosh, you're pretty tonight, Muriel. Seems age since we've been together. If you knew what I've suffered. I did, too. Gosh, Muriel. Oh, gosh, it sure is wonderful to be with you again. I'm glad it makes you happy, Dick. I'm happy, too. Muriel, can't I... Won't you let me kiss you now? Please. No, you mustn't. Don't. Oh, why can't I? Because I'm afraid. Oh, that's what you always say. You're always so afraid. Aren't you ever going to let me? I will sometime. Where? Soon, maybe. Tonight, will you? I'll see. Promise? I promise, maybe. All right. Remember, you promised. Now, don't let us stand here. Come on out. We can sit on the bench in the moonlight. Oh, it's so bright out there. No, no, see. You know, there's no running around the park at night. I know there isn't. That's why I thought it would be the best place. But there might be some. Oh, there isn't a sore. What's the use of a moon if you can't see it? There's only a new moon. That's not much to look at. But I want to see you. I can't hear in the shadow. I I want to drink in all your beauty. I bet I look a sight, don't I? Oh, you do not. You look wonderful. Muriel... You don't realize what I've been through, what that letter of yours made me do. What did my letter make you do? Oh, it's too long a story. Let the dead pass, bury its dead. No, tell me, Dick. I want to know. Begin at the beginning and tell me. Well, after your old your father, your father gave me a letter, Muriel, I figured your love for me was dead. And I oh. thought you'd never love me. You'd only been cruelly mocking me, torturing me. Oh, Dick, I've never. You know I've I, never. I wanted to die, and I sat and brooded about death and... Finally, I made up my mind I'd kill myself. Dick, you did. I did, too. And I thought when I'm dead, she'll be sorry she ruined my life. Oh, if you ever had, I'd have died. Too honest, I would. But suicide's the act of a coward, and that's what stopped me. And anyway, I thought to myself, she isn't worth it. Well, that's a nice thing to say. If you meant what was in that letter, you wouldn't have been worth it, would you? But I've told you. So I said to myself, I'm through with women. They're all alike. I'm not. And I thought, what difference does it make what I do now? I might as well forget her and drown all my sorrows and lead the pace that kills, so... After it was dark, I sneaked out and went to a low dock I know about. Oh, Dick Miller, I don't believe you ever. You asked him down to the Pleasant Beach House if I didn't. Uh, they won't forget me in a hurry. You went there? Well, that's a terrible place. Pa says it ought to be closed by the police. Well, I said it was a dive, didn't I? And they let me into a secret room behind the bar room. Wasn't anyone there but a Princeton senior, you know, and uh, he had two chorus girls from New York with him, and they were all drinking champagne. Oh, oh, Dick Miller, I hope you didn't. Oh, you ought to have known. Pa made me write that old man. The one that was called Belle. A yellow hair Belle had. A kind that burns and stinks, you know. I'll bet it was dyed. And then what happened? Oh, we just kept drinking champagne, all of us. And uh, she said she'd fall in love with me at first. And, you know, came and sat on my lap, kissed me. Oh. So in fun. And then we just kept on drinking champagne. And, uh... And it... Did you kiss her? No, I didn't. Oh, you did, too. You're lying and you know it. Oh, I hate you. I wish you were dead. I'm going home this minute. I never want to lay eyes on you again in this town. Now, Muriel, wait, listen. I don't want to listen. Let me go. Muriel. If you don't, I'll bite your hand. I won't let you. You've got to let me explain. I... Ouch. You did bite me. Well, all right. Go if you want. If you have the decency to let me explain, I... I hate you, too. I'll go and see... Bell. Well, go and see her. If that's the kind of girl you like, what do I care? 
You can't explain. What can you explain? You owned up. You kissed her. I did. I said she kissed me. I suppose you just sat and let yourself be kissed. Tell that to the Marines. All right, if you're going to call me a liar every word I say. I I... didn't call you a liar. I I only meant it It sounds fishy. Did you know it does? I don't know anything. I only know I wish I was dead. You've got to say that. It's wicked. I suppose you'll tell me you didn't fall in love with her. Oh, I should say not. Fall in love with that kind of a girl? What do you take me for? How do you know what you did if you drank so much champagne? Oh, I kept my head. I'm not a sucker, no matter what you think. Then, then you don't love her. Oh, I hate her. She wasn't even pretty. And anyway, how could I love her? I love you. Huh? Well, then, I still love you. Then come back here, why don't you? It's getting late. It's not half past you. All right. Well, I'll have to go soon. Gosh, I, I'm sorry I hurt your hand. Well, that was nothing. It felt wonderful even to have you bite. There, I'll kiss it. That'll cure it. You shouldn't waste that on my hand. You, you said you'd let me... I said maybe. Didn't you, Leo? You know, I want it so. Will it wash off? Kisses and make you forget you her for all oh, I should say so. I, I never remember anything but it. Never want anything but it ever again. But, all right. Hmm. The moon is beautiful, isn't it? Not as beautiful as you. Nothing is. Won't it be wonderful when we're married? Yes. But it's so long to wait. Oh, perhaps I needn't go to college. Perhaps I'll give me a job. Then we're making enough. Yeah, oh, I could... you better do what your pa thinks best. And I'd like you to be at Yale. Oh, poor you. Do you think he'll punish you off? I don't know. I don't care either. Gosh, but I love you. Oh, gosh, I love you. Darling. I love you, too. Sweetheart. Where are we going on honeymoon day? To Niagara Falls? That dump where all the silly fools go? I should say not. Oh, no, we'll go some far off wonderful place somewhere somewhere out on the long trail the trail that is always new on the road to Mandalay Margaret I'm glad Tommy told us where Richard went off to tonight I'd have worried my heart out if he hadn't. But now it's just all right. All right, is it? As for his being in luck, Muriel, I, I don't see but what it might work out real well. But you could do worse. I thought you had no use for Muriel. Thought she was stupid. Well, so I did. But if she's good for Richard and he wants her, Ma used to say you weren't over bright. Well, I've been bright now, enough to... Oh, hush up. Where'd you say Sid and Lily had gone off to? To the beach to listen to the band. Oh, I'm glad. What's that? What? Did you hear something? Yes, I did. That's Richard now coming around the house. Nobody else had come that way. I'll go out on the porch and meet him. You better leave him and me alone for a while, I see. Well, all right, I'll stay in here. Call me if you want me. But you'll remember all I've said now, won't you? Sure, Essie. Hello, Richard. Oh. Hello, Pa. Uh, sit down, Richard. Yep. No, right here, next to me. That's better. Well, how are the vine leaves in your hair this evening? I, I don't know, Pa. Mm, turned out to be poison ivy, didn't they? Huh. You needn't look so alarmed. I'm not going to read you any temperance lecture. That'd bore me more than it would you. Still giving you credit for having brains. So I'm pretty sure anything I can say to you, you've already said to yourself. Oh, I know I was a darn fool. You sure were. Not only a fool, but a downright stupid, disgusting fool. I know, Pa. All right, then. That's settled. Now, uh, one more thing. This girl at the Pleasant Beach House... Oh, Pa, if they've told you about it down there, they must have told you there wasn't anything in it. Honest, Pa, there wasn't. I wouldn't do a thing like that to Muriel, no matter how bad I thought she treated me. Honest. How'd you happen to meet this lady, anyway? I... I can't tell that, Pa. I'd have to snitch on something. You wouldn't want me to do that. No, I suppose I wouldn't. Well, I believe you. And I guess that settles that. There's nothing more to say, and we'll forget it, huh? How are you going to punish me, Pa? Oh, I was sort of forgetting that, wasn't I? 
Well, I thought of telling you you couldn't go to college. Don't I have to go, Honest? Oh, gee, that's great. Muriel thought you'd want me to. I was telling her I'd rather you give me a job on the paper because she ought to get married sooner. Oh, gee, if I picked a lemon, that isn't any punishment. You have to do something to stop that. And you'll go to college and stay there till you graduate. That's the answer to that. Muriel's got good sense, and you haven't. Now, we're finished. We'll call your ma. Yes, he. Here she comes. Hello, Ma. Hello, Richard. <gasps> night, a beautiful night. Moon's way down low, almost setting. Yes, I don't believe I've hardly ever seen such a beautiful night. Such a wonderful moon. Have you, Richie? No, it, it was wonderful down the beach. I can only remember a few nights that were as beautiful as this. And they were long ago when your mother and I were young and planning to get married. Yeah, yeah. I bet those must have been wonderful nights, too. Sort of forget the moon was the same way back then and everything. You're all right, Richard. You're a good boy, Richard. Better get to bed early tonight, son, hadn't you? Oh, sleep. Sleep. I couldn't sleep. Can't I stay out here on the porch and sit for a while until the moon sets, please? All right. Then you'd better say good night now. I don't know about your mother, but I'm going to bed right away. I'm dead tired. Well, so am I. Good night, Ma. Good night, dear. Good night, Pa. Good night. First time he's done that in years. I don't believe kissing between fathers and sons after a certain age. It seems mushy and silly. But that meant something. I don't think we'll ever have to worry about his being safe from himself again. I guess no matter what life will do to him, he can take care of it now. Oh, my darn feet are giving me fits. Why do you bother unlacing your shoes now, big goose, when we're going right up to bed? Yeah, I guess you're right. You mind if I don't say my prayers tonight, Essie? I'm certain heaven knows I'm too darn tired. Don't talk that way. It's real sinful. Oh, that isn't you all over. Always looking for an excuse to... Oh, you're worse than Tommy. Well, all right. I suppose you needn't. You've had a hard day. I'm going to turn out the lights already. Yep, let her go, Gallagher. Look at Richard out there on that porch. Like a statue of love's young dream. Mm. What's it that Rubiet says? Yet ah, that spring should vanish with the rose. That youth's sweet-scented manuscript should close. Well, spring isn't everything, is it, Essie? There's a lot to be said for autumn. That's got beauty, too. And winter, if you're together. Yes, Matt. Well, speaking as producer, the worst I can say for our guest tonight is that he doesn't always approve of my productions. Speaking as a citizen with the vote, the least I can say for George G. Nathan is that I always approve of what he writes. I didn't say agree, mind you. Heaven and the entire personnel of Active Equity forbid that I should recite for you a catalog of Mr. Nathan's unmentionably numerous virtues. I needn't remind you of the magazine which he founded, Mr. H. L. Menken, a magazine from which my theater took its name and both which will be nameless, nor of the list of his books which don't need what I'd like to say about them. It's not for me to celebrate the celebrated Nathan prose that blend richness and astringency against whose infinite variety time and custom seem to be getting nowhere. But let me say this much. Eugene O'Neill's dedication on the first page of Our Wilderness reads as follows. To George G. Nathan, who also, once upon a time, wore peg-top trousers and went the pace that kills along the road to ruin. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the Campbell Playhouse rededicates our wilderness to George G. Nathan. And we have our own good reasons. They are, among other things, his love of theater, as much as the gift and intelligence with which he served it. Mr. Nathan. O'Neill affectionately dedicated our wilderness to me, and it's only in the present tradition of close friendship that I should now return the compliment by saying uncomplimentary things about him. 
I've known the scoundrel intimately for more than 20 years, and I should like to take advantage of this occasion to tell you confidently that the popular idea of himself, which he has so cleverly built up through his plays, books which he has had written about him, and the expensive photographs of himself which he has spread around the world, is a whopping fraud. What picture have you got, O'Neill? He is, you believe, a fellow persistently gloomy and morbid, that if a funeral passes his house, his wife joyfully mistakes it for a Mardi Gras carnival. But if O'Neill is gloomy and morbid, all I can say is that someone has got the Scandinavian weather report fixed up with the dictionary. He is so gloomy and morbid in point of fact. Once, while I was staying with him on Sea Island, I had a brime with one of my best do whores and curious neckties to quit singing Rosie, You Are My Posy at top of his lungs after midnight so I'd get a little decent sleep. He roars with delight over Damon Runyon's stories of mugs who go around shaking hands with pieces of Limburger cheese concealed in their palms. He thinks Jack Benny is a scream and worth all the Ibsen actors this side of Stockholm. He wrote, don't forget, this Our Wilderness, which is not only approximately as gloomy and morbid as Charlie's Ant or the Beer Barrel Poker, but which, I may tell you, had to have 21 consecutive minutes of howling low comedy cut out of the dinner table scenes so following sentimental scenes might stand a chance of getting over it. O'Neill, you further believe, given to a large, steady, and copious indignation. In other words, a combination of ingrowing toenail, boil, and second act of the Valkyrie. Well, as I say, I've been pretty close to the fellow for almost a quarter of a century. And the one and only time I've ever seen him indignant about anything, it was three years ago, was when I argued with him that he was a jackass in not believing Joe Lewis, a top-notch fighter. Prize fighting, incidentally, is him more than almost anything else, except for sauerkraut. He loves sauerkraut. I've seen him down six big dishes of it in half an hour. You've read as being a painfully slow and laborious worker. You've heard that it takes him two years even to get to the profound point of putting down the line, Act One, the curtain rises. It's true he's a laborious worker, but so far as the painfully slow stuff goes, it's often a lot of bunkum. It's our wilderness, for example, he wrote in exactly 26 days. So you also think that on the earth from what you've heard must be a quick-tempered and nasty rooster in his dealings with the stage directors he plays. I'll give you an illustration out of many. During the rehearsals of the Star Wilderness, Philip Muller, the director, came down to the footlights and suggested to O'Neill, sitting huddled in the third row, that he thought it would be a grand idea if O'Neill permitted him to alter one line in the serious scene then being tried. Why, O'Neill wanted to know. It would, answered Muller, telling how he changed the line, be a beautiful, relieving laugh. Well, quietly mumbled O'Neill, it's funny, all right. In fact, it's pretty darn funny. In fact, it's fine, but... And here our friend gently squinted at Muller. It would be a whole heap funnier if you yourself played the role facing the audience and then, very, very slowly, while speaking the line, turned around and showed him a large chromo of William Jennings Bryan fastened to the seat of your pants. Muller had no more to say. The scene proceeded as O'Neill had written it, and that's the scene and that's the play that you have heard tonight. The makers of Campbell Soups join Orson Welles, inviting you to be with us at the Campbell Playhouse again next Sunday evening. Meanwhile, if you have enjoyed tonight's Campbell Playhouse presentation, won't you tell your grocer so tomorrow when you order Campbell's chicken soup? This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. My sponsors, the makers of Campbell Soups, and all of us on this program remain, as always, obediently yours. Thank you for listening to Good Old Radio and Orson Welles. Please take the time to subscribe, like, and share our videos all over the world. Thanks for listening. Bye now.